One unifying factor of every helicopter I've ever flown in, they've all had tail rotors, except today. This is Wes Klein. We're gonna run through the startup procedure. Let's observe Wes, tell us what you're doing. This has got FADEX, so it does talk to you through the headsets. It just goes through the startup procedures and just makes sure like all the lights are working, um, breakers are out, um, all the doors are latched, stuff like that. It's pretty simple. Turbines have always kind of eluded me. They seem kind of mystical and uh, complicated. So far, this seems like I could maybe do this. You could definitely do this, too. And then just watch the TOT, that's the biggest thing. Just okay. up a very expensive uh, day. as much spinning we've got going on. This feels very stable, very smooth. So the rotor system on this is pretty well balanced too. Um, I've flown other helicopters, FD600s, that were out of balance and it's a chore. Yeah. Them. Yep, like, yep. You're fighting the controls. This one's pretty smooth. It's, it's track and balance is, is good. Uh, flight controls, yes. Okay, now roll throttle. Okay. Low rotor. Low rotor recovery, okay. Low rotor. All right, RPMs all the way up. Lights are all the way out, below 105, GOT is good, below 107 to 9130, charging, plenty of fuel, that's uh, our fuel burn right there, battery's on, aux is not on, anti-collision's on, peanuts off, voices is on, utility power is on, and it's not needed, position light's not needed, not needed, generator is on, and avionics are on, and we're ready to go dude, it's called tower and let's get in motion. Helicopter 420, Golf Charlie at the base of tower, side tower, base of tower, uh, wanted to do a Departure adjacent to the ramp, remain south of Taxiway Alpha, and then turn left cross to Lake Matthews, information Oscar. Helicopter 420 Golf Charlie Riverside Tower, approved as requested, winds 270 at 10, and departure from the ramp be at your own risk, use caution. Depart the ramp from my own risk, 420 Golf Charlie. Okay, we're going to 75 on my good day, contact SoCal departure. Over to SoCal, 75 Mike, thanks. All right, good, good. Five five two nine zero one. Frequency change approved. Frequency change approved. Ten nine zero one. Okay, so Wes and I met during a very special operation. I live up in the mountains, and there was this big blizzard that happened, and uh, a bunch of people came and uh, spent their own time and money flying helicopter flights to bring supplies to the mountain community where I live. That's where I met Wes. Number one, Wes seemed like a very cool guy. Number two, he has a very cool helicopter, an MD600 Notar, and that's on my bucket list of helicopters to experience, so it seemed natural that we sync up. Hey, Wes, thanks for letting me fly in your helicopter. Absolutely, man. Number one question. Why the MD600N? When I was looking at helicopter, you know, it's price, performance, and availability. Performance, there's really nothing. This is like unmatched besides the Bell 407, which has the same exact uh, Rolls-Royce uh, C47 engine in it. Same performance, same everything. So I was in love with the MD2, love the helicopters. Me personally, I'd rather purchase an American built helicopter where I could get parts right from Arizona, get the support that I need. Honestly, the MD600, unfortunately, they do have a kind of a, a wrap for that tucking right roll turn. There's been some accidents uh, in them, so it has affected the resale value a little bit, whereas the Bell 407 will they'll warrant a little bit higher price point, so I was able to basically get a helicopter for quite a substantial amount cheaper. So we're gonna hit on that uh, issue you mentioned just a little bit later, but I'm kinda curious, let's talk about some of the basics, like what do we have in terms of performance, like cruise and speed, sure. and, and like, what do you got? The uh, max speed of this helicopter is 154 knots. You don't usually hit that unless you're in a dive, but it is cruising, like right now, it's a hot day right now, we're cruising at 129 knots. <laughs> if we were at a normal day, like even like a 90 degree day, 85 degree day, I'm cruising about 135 knots on the regular in this thing, unless you're fully loaded. I so, envy your speed, that's yeah. awesome. So the speed and the range of it is is very, very good in this helicopter. It's got a Rolls-Royce 808 horsepower uh, turbine motor. It's a 250 C47M, it's got a lot of power. You can make the same climb. I've made a climb like 2,530,000 feet a minute with one person in it, you know, by just pulling aft and back on the thing and just shooting right up on, on a cold day. Yeah. on the perfect weather. But yeah, I know it's got a boatload of power. Performance is great. 
I mean, you can't beat that in a light duty helicopter. You have a uh, auxiliary fuel tank back there. What kind of range do you have in this thing, like in terms of hours? I'll safely fly, fly this thing like 2.93 with a good 30 to 40 minute uh, reserve on it. So you've got probably with the aux tank, you have about safely like three and a half hours. I, I don't like to push it more than like 2.9. At 150 miles an hour or 135 knots, you know, you're going to get safely about four or 420, maybe 450 on the right day in the right weather if you're hauling butt. But yeah, the range is pretty good with aux. I've had the pleasure of flying at two different Hughes 500s. This is very similar in design. It's sort of uh, built on the same fundamentals, but if you look at it in profile, it's much longer. Talk about the utility a little bit. So it's basically just a stretch cab with the, the 520 or the 500 or the 530 um, to have an extra, what, three seats in it. So it's got a total of seven seats in it. I mean, weight-wise, you're not really fitting six full-size adults, but you could fit five or six guys, no problem, or I've had seven people in it, but it's going to be like three or four girls and, you know, four, four full-size men, you know, depending on weight. I was going to yeah. say, yeah, the space back there is awesome. When we were doing the uh, flights, taking supplies up the mountain, you were able to fit a ton of stuff back yeah. there. I yeah, mean, we took the seats out, remember that? Yeah, yeah totally. We took all the seats out, and uh, that worked out pretty good. Where have you gone with it? Like, what kind of distances have you covered? Let's see, I just came recently came from where? Santa Fe, New Mexico. So as we're flying here, I I'm noticing it feels like a very smooth comfortable ride that same behavior I noticed uh, when we were down on the on the ground it just feels exceedingly comfortable how is it like in long distance cruise can you put down the miles on your fine yeah I've been in it for that day I was in it for three hours non-stop you know the only thing that's gonna be uncomfortable I don't have AC in here you can get AC I don't um, once you get up in there it's not too bad if I was on a long distance right now I'd just climb up it's a little bit cooler you know air but we're on a short cruise so the controls are like it's got a trim actuator on it so I mean yeah. you, you're sitting there with your finger and moving around they're a little bit heavy but this helicopter this thing reacts really really fast with a, a smaller rotor system six blade helicopter it's got its advantages and disadvantages the advantages would be to put it down in a hole in somebody's backyard when we're dropping like supplies up a big bear between three, two, pine three, trees three, and seven, snow seven, and all that I mean I'm able to favorite. creep down in with no tail rotors I don't have to worry about hitting my tail rotors either and it's got 27 and a half uh, foot rotor system like so traffic. downfall would be it auto rotates very fast to the floor if you an engine, but another rotor system, and the helicopter is, is very stable. The, uh, I'm not fighting the controls at all. I mean, I can have my hands off of them and uh, fly and fly. As, as a former Enstrom guy, I'm very used to having that hat function, and that feels very natural to me. The first time I flew in a 500, I was like, oh, this felt like home. It was very, very comfortable. The number one question I'm sure you get, what's up with the NOTAR? So tell us about how the system works. So it obviously doesn't have a tail rotor. It's got a fan inside the tail boom, so it's a hollow tail boom. It's got a 13 uh, blade uh, variable pitch fan. So it's got a uh, slots in it to uh, create like a Kwanda effect where it, it grips the air around the uh, tail boom and gives you a natural um, anti-torque and then it has a, th a thrust door, a cone door in the back that opens and closes and it, it pushes the air up against the vertical stabilizers for anti-torque um, and that obviously is controlled with your pedal so anytime I make a pedal input it's going to roll that cone door and you know let more or less air uh, based on your pedal inputs and then it's also got the vertical stabs, those giant vertical stabs you saw back there. Those are really, really, I really like those things when you're at speed like above 70, 80 knots. They're very, very effective. They just keep the ship really, really straight even in heavy winds um, it's, it makes it very very stable in a hover you're not going to have as much tail authority you know at high elevations is the only time i've ever noticed it there's nothing you can't overcome you know it's just like you know if you're in a 30 knot you know crosswind and trying to land it then why would you you know be against the wind but like yep. i did that one time up in santa bay where i was just trying to get the attention tower it was pushing me pretty hard where i had to detorque a little bit while in a hover but once you got straight take off it's, it's fine like it takes some time getting used to for sure but once you're used to this thing i mean the controls there's nothing to complain about. The other thing I noticed when you were um, leaving, when we were doing the mountain work, uh, taking supplies up, is that this thing sounds incredible. <laughs> So what are the special considerations with a NOTAR setup, like from a piloting perspective? Obviously, it's like a little bit of a different feel, but like what about emergency procedures? That's uh, actually a definitely pro, a positive for the NOTAR. Uh, if you lose a motor, you lose, uh, you have engine fire, engine failure, you are still going to auto down just like a normal helicopter, no different. And so the benefit of not having a tail rotor is if I lose the... Uh, clear yaw control right now, I have a stuck left or stuck right, I'm going to keep flying until my next airport. I'm not stopping. Like all those huge vertical stabilizers, they're going to keep me straight. Say we um, have a stuck right pedal, I'm going to try to maintain about 80 knots into my uh, approach. Yep. And then when I get close to the airport, I'm going to slowly, gently detorque, 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 and I'm going to come down to a skid 
and I'm gonna actually land at speed, which is good that the vertical stab stabs are gonna try to help us keep us straight for as long as we can. And we're probably gonna spin a little bit, um, just, you know, a hair once we get to the bottom, because your natural reaction is you're gonna wanna pull power, but uh, you can come down to a skid. So you're not auto-rotating down. Let me quickly interject that the sponsor for today's video is Flying Eye Sunglasses. I wear them in the helicopter because they're extremely lightweight. They're made out of a material called Resilamide that allows you to bend them like this and watch. I can conveniently put them in. They have super thin temples and they are very comfortable. If you're curious why I wear them in the helicopter and in my normal life, click the link in the description below. Use the promo code Micah to save 10% on Flying Eyes. Okay, question. Yes, sir. How is this to own? Like in terms of maintenance and just living with it. That's that's a good question. Because a lot of people say, oh, there's so much maintenance, there's so many problems, and that's simply not true. This ship right now is 1,000 hours. Huh? At 6,000 hours, we're gonna have to replace the tail boom. Uh, most helicopters you do, um, the thing is on different on Notar, it's a little bit more expensive to replace the tail boom. So you're gonna be in, into a little bit more money. It's basically similar to all of the helicopters, right? The main difference is the tail rotor, um, you know, and it's got a bad rep. It is somewhat justified. It has that tucking right roll that you need to be aware of. Let's talk about that. The tucking right roll is a thing. I know nothing about it. What is it? How's it happen? Well, as you can see in this aircraft, they made it a left-hand command. Um, a lot of the other aircrafts, like your Robinson, is a right-hand command. They try to market these for border patrol and police and para paramedics and such. So what are you going to tell me if you're in the passenger seat and you're the camera guy or the observer or whatever, you're going to say circle right, yep. right? So I'm like, all right, we're going to circle right. So we start circling right. You're going to say there's a problem down there. You know, tuck it in, make, make a more narrow approach, you know, narrow, narrow up your turn, right? So a 30 degree bank is, a, is the max bank you're supposed to. You can bank way more than that, and we all know that. You can, I've seen this thing at 40, 45 degrees, easy, yeah. no problem. But 30 degrees is the safe bank, uh, is where you're supposed to, that's your max. So you're, you're, once you get over 30 degrees, and you're out of trim, and you're, so you're, 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 way, you're yawing way right on the pedals, you're 35, 40 degree bank, you start circling, the guy's telling you circle tighter, circle tighter, this is what somebody's down there I need to see, and you get too, you, you tuck the turn in too hard, too, too far right bank, you get really, really slow, you go below 45 knots, all of a sudden, it's gonna snap like you would imagine, and it's gonna scare the out of you. It snaps hard. I, I simulated it with the guy. Yeah. He said, and I'm sitting there, I'm already at like, you know, 35, 40 degree bank. He's more right pedal, more, I'm like, it's just not natural to have this much right pedal. Yeah. You know, like, you're like, you're like, you're yawn to the right, like, you can totally notice it. And circle harder, pull your turn tighter, slow down. I mean, we had to do all the three, three bad things to make yep. it happen. And when it snaps, it's gonna scare you because it's gonna put you like this, right? Because you're going slow. Now what's your corrective uh, action? What you're gonna think, what you're gonna do in a panic, you're gonna ask back. Now you just made it worse. You already have this tucking, snapping right right turn. You're spacing straight down. It's because you were already going too slow. You're already at like 40 knots, 35. Now you're at like 25 knots. Now you're losing ETL and you're pointing straight down and you're going slow. You just made it worse. You're probably not gonna recover. Gotcha. Left, left cyclic, left pedal. That's the corrective action. You'll get, you'll get right out of it. I mean, unless you're like, you know, 200 feet, 150 feet AGL when you do it. Yeah. And that's it. And they get, that's what they got the terrible rap for. So that's what you need to be aware, made aware of. And that's, that's the, that I can think of that's going to happen that's bad in an OTAR, in a 600. They're not as common in the 520. They're more common in the 600. They are, they do happen in the 520 though, yeah. um, with the OTAR. And yeah. I think honestly, it, the pros, the positives outweigh the cons, if you have the proper training. But I'm also not buying this for Border Patrol and police. I'm not having an observer sitting here telling me to constantly circle right. It's a matter of understanding the cons and then mitigating the dangers. There's no perfect aircraft. No. Yeah. I mean, the reaction time on it too, like when I was up in Big Bear, a freaking hawk at the bottom of the base of the hill came, it was coming straight at me and like, you move this cyclic. I mean, this thing reacts like, I mean, it reacts. Fast. <laughs> it, it, the six blade rotor system with the thing reacts like it's fast. And also we didn't mention this in an MD, which is a big selling point as well too, is the frame. Yeah. This is one of the most crash worthy frames in the industry in a light duty helicopter. Semi monocroc frame and it's got a, 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 a frame truss that's right behind us. That's uh, right here that's built in as a kind of a back backrest for us. Um, these have a very, very crash worthy frame. Personally, uh, I don't have MD600 money, but uh, if I did, I would be really intrigued by this for the uh, size and the speed. What do you guys think about the MD600N? Leave comments and real quick, if you guys haven't followed him, follow Wes over on Instagram. He posts super cool stuff. The footage you guys got the other day of this thing flying looked absolutely outrageous. So be sure to follow him on Instagram. And I guess last question, anything you want to promote? And I'm in this dispensary world, but I mean, the business is doing okay. I, I love aviation. I, I wish I could do this for a living. It just doesn't pay the bills yet. I, I hope someday it will. I hope I can charter some of you guys out on flights someday. I'm going to be chartering this aircraft someday, so 
Just follow me at Xtress West and uh, for updates. Personally, I'm pretty dazzled with the MD600, guys. If there's a helicopter you'd like me to review, uh, let me know in the comment section. Normally, it'd be me, my wife, and my daughter reviewing cars, but I like to dabble in the helicopter space. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bam.